everybody, it's Sam and Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really cute little kind of note card envelope holder. I thought it would be really nice for any craft fairs that you might have, and they also make nice little gifts as well. So I'm using the Paper Boutique papers. I'll show you all that in a moment, but I love that image. It's my favorite one. But I've got this lovely big ribbon here. I've used some mirrored cardstock to create these faux metal kind of edges, I guess. But you just open it up, undo this bow. And I've done this all from one piece of card, so I quite like the way this all comes together. So you open it up, and you can obviously put some more stuff on here if you want. But then you have this little kind of pocket, and inside there are, I've probably put maybe one, maybe even two, too many, but I have used foam. You can see the foam on there just to give them dimension. But if I pull them out, you can see there just how it's made. So it's all from one piece of cardstock, and it is very straightforward to make. But look, you have all these really cute, plain note cards using the toppers that come with these little card kits. So I love them, and these are the matching envelopes. They're so cute. And I just think, how nice are they if you just want to send a little, send any friend mail. I've just left them blank, because then you can just write across the whole thing, which is what you know I would use them for. But these ones I'm going to be sending out to some friends anyway. And then you just sit in your envelopes all in there. Like I said, this is holding one, two, three, yes, yeah, six. And it holds them perfectly, but I would say maybe don't use the foam, I guess. But it does work. All it does is it's just got a slight little bulge. Just very, very slight, just there. But hey, I like that kind of look to my craft sometimes. I don't know, it just it feels nice. So yeah, that's what we're going to make. Really easy, so I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so that was the template. That's what I first created, and that's what I've worked off. So you can see kind of how it looks. This will all fold up and fold in to form the pocket, and then that's the closure. So I made a few adjustments to it. I've got this lovely ribbon, which I've had for ages, which works really well. Now I've gone and done all of the cards, and all but one envelope, because the cards are very, very easy. I will tell you the measurements, but you're just sticking a topper on the top, so <laughs> there isn't really much for me to tell you there. I've got all these little bits, which we'll talk through through the course of the video. So there's my five envelopes. For each envelope, you need a piece of six by six. So these paper packs are eight by eight, so I just had to cut a little bit off each side. But if you've got any six by six paper packs, then that's perfect, because you can just use those straight away. So I've gone and created the topper for the very front, and this is my little bit of shimmer cardstock there. That's what I'm using for the actual base. And then the supplies I've used for the little, behind all of these is a little doily, and it's these ones here. These are the Nature's Grace ones. So I've had, I think I'm on my second pack of these now, and I picked the second lot up from Every Crafts a Pound, I think it was, but I will share links, because I'm sure there's quite a few sellers that have that one. And this is the beautiful paper. So it's the Magical Forest by the Paper Boutique. Uh, you get 36 sheets and six designs, and these are the topper sheets are like this, but I've nearly, I've popped them all out, but that's how they come. So you get the square and the circle, and you just pop out and you get all these lovely images. And they're just gorgeous, and their, their range is brilliant. So I know so many of you have been sharing your recent purchases from the Paper Boutique, and I'll link everything below, because like I said, they do some absolutely gorgeous pictures and scenes and everything, and they do so much within the paper range. So for one of these cards, you want a piece that is seven, okay, by three and a half. So they're three and a half by three and a half note cards. And then along that seven inch side, you just want to score at three and a half fold it in half. I've done them as top folding and there is your note card. And then the toppers are already, that's the size they are and it just so much, well just, it just so well happened that the doily just gave it that perfect little frame. So yeah, there are my six, okay. That's the card stock I've used for this one, it's the Centura Pearl. I picked this up from the works. They are currently, as of this video, which is, oh, I don't know the day. Anyway, I think they'll still be there. I'll link them below if they are, but it's they're two fifty they're two forty nine a pack. And this is the Pacific. Beautiful shimmer to it. So yeah, you can probably see it a bit better there. It's lovely. Okay, so with this piece here, this is a piece of nine and three eighths of an inch by six and a quarter. And along the longer side, first of all you want to score at one quarter of an inch. Okay. Then at one inch. Then at four and three quarters, then at five and a half. Miss this one I've done for the minute, go then to five and three quarters. Okay, we'll do that one in a minute. Then rotate 
and you're going to score at one and three quarters past the first score line, second score line, third and fourth and you're going to score down to that last one which should be your fifth score line. Okay, then you're going to score at two and a half all the way down. Okay, then go back again and you want to score at five and five eighths of an inch down to that first score line which would have been that long one that you just done. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Just yeah, slow the video down and just do it step by step if you need to. But I will go through it one more time actually. So one quarter of an inch along the long side, one inch, okay. Oh, I'll talk it actually, I don't want to go over it again. Then four and three quarters, then five and a half, then miss one and do five and three quarters. Then onto the small side and again do one and three quarters down to the last score line here, which should be the fifth score line. One, two, three, four, five. Then at two and a half all the way down. Then rotate back again and score at five and five eighths of an inch down to that first score line. The reason I've got those three together is that's going to be where the lid kind of closes around and it just gives you a bit more of a nicer finish. Okay, so that's all of that done. You don't need any more scoring, so I'm going to put all this away. Okay, so first of all, you just want to fold and burnish all of these score lines. You should be able to do that on every score line apart from the one where you only scored it partially because obviously you don't want to score that all the way through. So I'm just going to go and do that. Okay, so the only score lines I haven't been able to burnish is along the long side you would have had that last one you done just down to there and then also that one where you just scored down to the fifth score line you won't be able to burnish that because they're actually going to be our cut lines, okay? So I so, want to make sure I get this all explained as clear as possible. So where you've got those three score lines together here, you'll have this score line to here, okay? And you'll have this quarter inch piece here. Turn it side, you just want to cut right up to that one. And you want to remove the score line. I'm just going to come up a little bit higher on that one. Okay, and then cut all the way up that one there, just to join up. Okay, once you've made these before then you can cut it maybe slightly differently but I just at first I just want to make sure I, it makes sense. I'm just going to remove that little bit of there. Okay, so we'll just stick with that for the minute. Then you want to come to this side and you'll have this quarter inch kind of tab all the way along here. Okay, and we want to remove, I'm going to use my snips, you want to cut along this score line here. So you'll have this quarter inch piece here and you'll have that square and that little piece there and then these pieces. You're going to cut right along there and along that one. Okay, on this little one you want to take out that little piece, okay? But do not take it out on this one because that's actually where we're going to add our glue to stick in that piece. But this here, you want to just take a few wedges off of. It's going to act just like a little tab, really, a little support with inside. Then this whole section here, you can remove completely. So again, try and remove the score line because this is all going to form the, well this will form the back of your actual little kind of holder, your case. Okay, if I come back here again, that's now what you should have. So you'll have this little quarter inch, and this piece, the tab, and that will all be straight. If I bring it around, you can start to see, because this will fold up inside. So now we've cut that out, you should be able to burnish that other score line. Okay. Now we need to kind of detach all of this side here. So come back so it's that way and cut all the way down both of these, just like we did with the opposite side. But I just wanted to do this one after so that it made sense what you want to achieve. So you need to make this, these two just like this. So with that little one again, you just want to take out that section and then again, just tidy this up and take some little wedges off of it. Okay, now you should be able to burnish that other score line in there. And it's just creating a nice kind of curved kind of front, kind of hinge. So now this will come up, these will go in like that. This is all gonna come up and be stuck 
onto this one here and then that will wrap and close around and you have that little case. So I hope I broke that down enough for you to understand all of the scoring and where to cut. Okay, so next we want to stick it down. So I'm going to grab my red tape and I'm going to run a strip on each of these little quarter inch sides here. So one on this one and one along this one here. And what you want to do at the same time is you want to add a little bit of glue onto this tab. Do one at a time. So I'm working on the one that's, you know, on, it's close to this side. You're going to bring that over, even though you've taken the release paper off, and just stick it in place. Make sure you get a nice right angle. Okay, so can you see what I done? I just stuck it inside there. So just make sure you keep everything nice and straight. Okay, and then bring in that one there and you want to stick it in line with that score line on the back. Okay, so you can see where I've just lined it up. And you can just go in there with your finger, or maybe it'd be better actually with my bone folder. Like so. And just make sure that glue's all stuck down, and that's what you'll get. So again, with this side here, I'm going to fold this one up. I've already taken the backing off. Just a little bit of glue just to tack it in place. This one's a tiny bit more fiddly because you need to kind of hook that in the back like so. Make sure you push it down. You want to get it right up so you get a nice right angle. Okay, again, pop it on its side. Stick that down and then if you pop it completely on its side you'll be able to stick that glue onto the other side there. So that's how it should look inside. You can see where your tab is and where those two quarter inch ones are stuck to the back of this. But that's now it. And because we've done that curved piece there, it, it fits over there nicely. And this is when you want to see if you've got like any kind of score lines. I can see I've got a little bit of a score line showing there. Again, you probably can't really notice it, but you know, they are there if you do want to tidy it up a little bit. But that is your little case. And uh, yeah, I really like it. So now you want to decorate it. So I'd already got my piece to decorate the front here. For some reason I thought I'd made that slightly smaller. Let me just check. Yeah, I did have a frame for that one, so I don't know why. Yeah, let me just cut that down a little bit. Okay, you want it to be kind of just, just over three and a half by three and a half. Um, I mean, that's me being... Let me just check. Yeah, that's better. I just get that really nice subtle little border. Okay, so that's that piece there. So I'm just going to stick that on the front. Okay, so that's that one stuck down. And then my topper, I used a circle from one of my stitched dies and it was three and a half diameter. Put some foam adhesive on the back and I'm going to stick that over. This foam adhesive is very sticky. It's just what I pick up from Poundland in the UK. But it is so sticky, it actually is almost too sticky, it sticks to your nails and stuff, so it is a bit irritating, but it's perfect for sticking onto glittered cardstock. Or you can use the red tape, but I wanted dimensions, so yeah, once this stuff sticks, it doesn't come off. So make sure you've got it up the right way, and just stick... Ah, before you stick it down, I almost done it, and I nearly done it last time, you want to add your ribbon. <laughs> so I've got this pretty ribbon here. It's up to you how much you want, depends on how big you want your bow. But I'm going to add some of this red tape here. Just going to pop a little bit in the middle just to kind of grip the ribbon. But I don't actually stick it all the way around, I only stick it on this front piece. So just make sure that's nice and secure. Take the backing off. And then just lie that ribbon down over there and then add my topper. Again, the ribbon is optional, but it does obviously keep everything together. I'm just going to hold this up here, like so, okay? And then I will trim that down in a minute. Next, you want to decorate inside. So I have got this piece here, which is the same size as the front. But again, I think I must have not been concentrating because I seem to have cut them a little bit odd. So let me just get this one here. So this is, yes, yeah, the same size, just over three and a half, really. So let me just check what I did do here. Mm, yeah, it's a little bit longer. Let's just come in and trim that one down. 
So that one is going to go in there. I'm going to keep this out because I might have got the others wrong. And then this one here, no, that one's fine. This one measures uh, just over one and a half by three and five eighths. Okay, but it should be just over really. The reason why it's just slightly over is because the size, the way that we've done these extra score lines here and stuff. So a lot of you know what you're doing anyway. This little piece here is the same height here. So this one here, so just over three and a half by five eighths of an inch. And that one is going to go in there. And then these little silver pieces are half an inch. And I've just done them at uh, one and a half for the minute, but you will trim them down. And they're to go on the ends of the ribbon. So it's completely optional. But I am going to go and stick all of this down. Okay, so that's that all stuck down. Then I'm going to bring in my envelopes, bar one, because so I'm going to give you the measurements for that in a minute. So they were the six by six in size that you need. They will fit in there just perfectly. And then I've got my six beautiful little note cards there. I think it looks so sweet. And then for the other one, you're using the envelope punch board with your piece of six by six. You're following the three and a half by three and a half card size. So it's telling you there you need your six by six piece and your first score line is at three inches. So line this up with your three, punch and score. I like to fit mine right to the opposite side and do the same. And then I use this as my guide and you're just going to move this along until it lines up with this line here punch and score and again bring this along until it lines up with this line punch and score and you want to do that six times or you may want to do five probably five would be fine actually with the foam on them so it's entirely up to you have a play around so just fold and burnish your four corners and then if you're using directional paper, obviously make sure that you have it up the right way. And the bottom two side pieces, you just want to add some double-sided tape. Okay, and then take the backing off of one and stick that one down and then take the backing off the other and stick that one. Now you can add double-sided tape here if you're maybe going to be selling these at craft fairs, but I would say if you're just keeping them for yourself, then I don't bother. I've got nice little stickers that I add on here, and you've, some, I know lots of people have got friend mail stickers and things like that, so it's entirely up to you. But now I'm just going to add that one to the others. Okay, so that's that already. Then I'm going to wrap this around and tie a nice bow. Okay, and then you just want to trim if you're doing what I'm going to do now with those little silver pieces of card, then you just want to cut, because this is, these are terrible scissors. I just found them and now I know why I need to sharpen them. <laughs> um, if you're going to add the silver, this is, this car, um, this ribbon here is, yeah, just slightly just over one inch. So that was one and a half width. Along the half inch side, I scored it a quarter of an inch and I've just put some red tape on each half and they're just going to fold over. So the reason I've gone slightly larger because it's easier to make it bigger and then if you stick your ribbon over half, so just stick it up to the score line and then just fold that back over and then using your scissors, your snips, you can just go in and very carefully cut and that way you get them just perfectly lined up and I've done this before in a couple of gift bags, I've shared tutorials, but it's such a nice detail without having to buy any metal pieces. And you can have them any colour you want, any mirrored cardstock or glitter cardstock you can use. And it looks really, really good, it's really effective. So again, take off this here. So it's a kind of cheaper way to add pretend metal effects to your projects. You don't have to go out and spend loads of money. So again, I'm just going to cut this one off. Okay, so there you have it, two, I think, really very cute little gifts. You could, you know, these are perfect to add with other things as little Christmas gifts, stocking fillers, also great for craft fairs, and just nice to keep for yourself and just send little note cards to your friends. Or like I said, send the whole thing as some friend mail because it's, it's a little bit addictive to make. I have thoroughly enjoyed making these. I just think they look so cute and I love that little fake metal detail. So hope you've enjoyed these as much as I have. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye. Thank you.